Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and a brand new experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if Southampton got all of their old players back. All of the players that they sold for large amounts of money, that includes former academy players or just um, young players that they picked up and then sold on for a major profit because Southampton have made hundreds of millions from transfers coming in over the last few seasons, especially since coming back into the Premier League a few years ago um, and they've been acknowledged as a bit of a feeder team for Liverpool. So what I've done is go back and I've not changed anything else about the club whatsoever but I've just brought back all of their players going back to about 2006 that are out um, and are of any major note. So you can see here the first one on Jay Rodriguez moves to West Brom quite recently. Um, before that, they had Sadio Mane, who moved to Liverpool, now valued at £55 million. Definitely one of the better players that they've got, able to play on either wing. Uh, Graziano Pella, not sure he's that big a name, 31 years old, but I thought I may as well bring him back because he's uh, earning quite a lot of money out in China, so there must be something in the game there for him. Um, Jose Font, decent centre-back, uh, probably should come back, having signed for West Brom recently, uh, sorry, West Ham recently for uh, at 33 years old. You've then got Nathaniel Klein, who can play out at right back, another player who went to Liverpool, valued at quite a lot of money, England regular. Um, Morgan Schneidlin now at Everton obviously left for Manchester United I think he still does a very decent job in the game in central midfield so he should be able to continue to do that for them especially alongside Victor Wanyama who moved to Spurs a couple of years ago another very very good player one that I forgot even was at Southampton but he was so good for them there uh, you've also got Luke Shaw, who can play at left back, moved to Manchester United for £30 million. Not as highly rated in the game as he was previously, but still a world class centre back, uh, sorry, left back, and so will be doing a good job. And you can already see here that with Wanyama, uh, sorry, with Luke Shaw, Nathaniel Klein, and Jose Font, and Virgil van Dijk, who in this game is still in the club, that's the back four already covered. Um, Adam Lallana, another player who can play anywhere really in midfield or attacking midfield. A very good player, again, at Liverpool. Um, Dejan Lovren, another centre-back who can be alongside Van Dijk or Jose Font in the defence. So completely built out an entirely new or old defence at Southampton. Um, Callum Chambers can also play at right-back along with Nathaniel Klein, Klein can play in centre-back as well. Uh, so very much not short of defensive options. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, another player who can play on the wings alongside Lalana and Mane. Uh, obviously left for Arsenal a very long time ago. If we have a look at his career stats, you can see um, he meant he left for Arsenal back in 2011-2012. Um, it feels like he moved a lot longer ago than that, but now gone to Liverpool, another former Southampton player at Liverpool in a roundabout way. And then going even further back, you've got Gareth Bale, definitely the biggest player that we've brought back to the club. He left for Spurs in 07 08, so a decade ago um, at this point in the game. Um, and you can see he played 38 games from in the championship before moving to Spurs for just £5 million. And then he's been at Madrid now for four years, uh, going into his fifth year, but now back at Southampton. Uh, and you've also got Theo Walcott here, who plays on the right flank, uh, recently moved to Everton in the game, still at Arsenal though. Another player moved at the end of the 06 season. So over a decade ago, Theo Walcott as a 16-year-old left uh, Southampton to go to Arsenal. So you can see that's a huge number of players who've been moved. And with Rodriguez and Pele, uh, Pele up front and then Mane, uh, Bale on the wings. You've got Lallana could play in midfield, but Schneidlin and Wanyama there as well. Complete set of defenders or uh, defensive players. And then in goal, obviously, you've got Fraser Forster already. Add that to the squad that they've already got. And when you start to sort it by value, it's worth an awful lot of money. So this is going to be an impressive squad going into the Premier League, certainly one that would be up there with the likes of Liverpool, who will obviously be weakened with so many of their key players going back to Southampton. But this is an incredible, good, strong squad. They've got uh, Ryan Bertrand at left back as well. Uh, there's Fraser Forster, uh, Ward Prowse, Hoiberg, very good players in the game, Yoshida in defence as well. Um, it'll be interesting to see who they let go. Obviously, all the players who've just come in won't be able to go in the first season. They might in January, but I think that would be somewhat unlikely. So it'll be interesting to see what 11 Southampton are playing season by season. And also just how they perform, because there are a lot of £30-plus million pound players here. Certainly a few around £30 million pounds as well 
um, which builds up a very, very strong team. You've also got Dusan Tadic, who's highly rated in the game. Um, so I'm very interested to see how this one goes out. And this is an experiment that you guys recommended to me down in the comments. So if you have other suggestions for experiments, do let me know. Also, drop a like on this video if you enjoy these kind of one-off experiments as and when they come up. But let's go forward one year now and see how these players have done back at Southampton. We are now one year into the future, and as we can see, their preseason went reasonably well. Only three preseason friendlies, though, which is a little bit short. But then they managed to beat Watford two goals to one. Gareth Bale scoring in the 88th minute to win that game on his return to Southampton. Um, they were then beaten 2 0 by Spurs in, at Wembley uh, before beating Southampton, uh, sorry, beating Bristol Rovers 4 0. Walcott, Hoiberg with two, Gabby Adini with one as well. And then against Chelsea, a huge result, a 2-0 win. Sadio Mane and Steven Davies with the goals there. Um, beaten 4-0 by Arsenal, though not ideal. 2-1 over Swansea. I'm just doing this so you can get an idea of who's scoring the goals for them. A big 2-1 win over City. So they've beaten Chelsea and Man City already, uh, both at St. Mary's. But Graziano Pella seems to be getting a few goals for them. Mane got one there. Uh, and then a couple of defeats to Everton and Man City. Uh, Lamina scoring a goal, Bale, Chambers, Lamina again, um, quite patchy form at this point, a little bit inconsistent, they did beat Brighton though in the South Coast sort of derby, 3-1 uh, win for Crystal Palace at St Mary's, Gareth Bale got, opened the scoring then but absolutely demolished, and then they went on a nice winning run, Charlie Austin of course, another quality striker that they've got in the team, and you can see Bale is doing reasonably well for them. And they've had a nice little unbeaten run here, including beating Liverpool two goals to one. And you can see the team here as well actually showing up this time. So they were lining up with Forster, Klein, Van Dijk, Lovren and Bertrand, uh, which is quite an interesting team in defence. Then they had Lamina, Wanyama, Oxley chamberlain and Stephen Davis with Gareth Bale um, playing presumably up front or maybe coming off the bench. I'm not sure how that's quite worked, but Mane, Walker and Redmond all involved as well. And then when they were beaten by Manchester United, they played a weakened team, presumably because it's the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, but a very much weakened team. Uh, and they got knocked out there in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. And that also meant a defeat to West Brom. Good draw against Spurs, but then beaten 2-1 by Chelsea as well. Um, maybe a more full-strength side out there for that match. Beat Northampton in the FA Cup, though, so possibility of a run there. But really struggling. Three defeats in a row in the league. And then th or drawing in the FA Cup fourth round, but getting through 4-1 in the replay. Not struggling too much uh, out there. And if we just sort of go down, you can see their form very, very inconsistent. And I think that means they're probably not going to have qualified for the Champions League this time around. Although a huge winning run here, including 3-1 over Manchester United. They've beaten a lot of the big teams, which will have set them up very well in the league table. Knocked out in the semi-finals on penalties by Spurs, which is quite unfortunate. And then... Going into the end of the season, losing 4-0 to Liverpool at Anfield. Obviously, Daniel Sturridge, Mohamed Salah, Robert Firmino, all still there. So still a very strong Liverpool side in that game. And if we have a look at the Premier League table for last season, looking at stages and then dropping back one year, you can see they finished in 7th place. So not really peaking, but certainly competing with Spurs there, level on points, only goal difference falling behind them, but eight points off the Champions League is quite a big gap to make up, especially when you've got already got a player like Gareth Bale in your side. I'm not really sure what else we could do to boost them up without bringing in more world-class players. But if we look at their transfer history over the last season, uh, you can see obviously all these players came in, they didn't bring anybody else into the team, but quite a few going out. And if we sort them by fee, you can see Dusan Tadic, Left the club, Bufal went, Yoshida, Shane Lung, Jay Rodriguez didn't last very long before going in January for £10 million. Stevens, Gardos and Pied all going as well. Um, and then some players going out on loan as well because obviously they had so many players in the team they had to get rid of them through one method or another. But £50 million raised in player transfers. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do in this January transfer uh, in this summer transfer window because there's no business so far. We're only at the 26th of June, um, so it will be interesting to see which players they bring in. If we look at their uh, records, 
Then you can see Sadio Mane was the top goal scorer last season with 14. You then had uh, Mane getting the highest average rating, so not Gareth Bale, which is quite interesting. Um, any other major bits down here? Most assists, Oxide chamberlain with 8. Uh, and player of the match was Mane with 6. So Mane seemed to be the main key man in this season. If we look at Mane here, you can see worth nearly £63 million at this point. So interesting whether he stays here in the long term. But a 7.34 rating. Only 13 goals and 4 assists. You would have expected more assists than that. But 21 goal contributions in all competitions across 42 games isn't too bad. And if we have a look at Gareth Bale who is their key player, so should be doing reasonably well for them. You can see he's worth 74 million, but only a 7.03. Not very good there. He only played 28 Premier League games, presumably because he got injured. But only eight goals in all competitions with two assists is not the kind of return you'd expect from Gareth Bale, to be honest. The lowest goal total he's had since 09-10 with Spurs. So really, you would have expected him to do an awful lot better. And you can see a lot of the player values still holding true to where they were at the start of the season, but a little bit changed there. There's still about 11 of them, though, rated quite highly. So what we're going to do now is go forward two years this time to a total of three years, have a look at the transfers, see what the club's achieved, um, and see who the big players are still at the club. Because a few of them, like Gareth Bale, like Theo Walcott, now hitting that 30 years old mark and will start to decline after those two years have passed. Well, we are two years into the future, and if we take a look at the first year after where we left off, you can see they did qualify for the Europa League, only the qualifying rounds, but they managed to get past uh, Kukuriki, or Kuchuriki, not really sure, 8-1 uh, on aggregate. Then they beat Luzerne 5-0 on aggregate, beating Köln in a friendly along the way. Then they lost to Newcastle in the first game of the league season, but you can see their form generally quite good, and the Europa League... Pretty good for that, uh, just because you're playing smaller teams you would expect to be beaten. And another aggregate win got them into the group stage of the competition. You can see they beat Chelsea two goals to one, um, with Gabbiadini and Pella getting the goals there before getting crushed 3-0 by Manchester United. But overall, a very, very good start to the season. Just defeats to Newcastle and to Man United. And that winning run continued in the Europa League where they managed to beat FC Utrecht. They also got through against Brentford in the Carabao Cup, beat Fiorentina 3-0, a very good result there, um, before drawing with Sporting, but putting themselves in a good position, got knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Arsenal, who have El Ghazi and Mares playing for them. Um, but more wins in the Europa League, setting themselves up quite well before losing to Fiorentina, but I'm pretty sure they will have topped the group out of those kind of results. Uh, league form really struggling though defeats to Sunderland 3-0 Man City, West Brom, Crystal Palace Liverpool, Brighton, Chelsea United, a huge number of defeats there, barely even getting as many wins as they're getting defeats, but a nice winning run here set them up quite well, and then in the Europa League knockout stages, 2-0 over Red Bull Salzburg, 1-0 at home, got them into the last 16 where they had to play Spurs and were beaten 5-2 on aggregate, very unfortunate there to go out like that, having to play a team like Spurs so early on. But a sign that maybe they're not competing at the highest level and the number of defeats they're getting in the league would definitely echo that. I'm not really sure where they would have finished that season. But as you can see, they did actually finish two points clear of Spurs and were only three points behind Arsenal. So they are competing as one of the top seven teams now. Interesting to see Sunderland bounce back into the Premier League and finish above my team, Newcastle. Um, but Southampton really not doing too badly there, certainly not as badly as their defeats would suggest, given they lost 14 matches that season, more than anybody in the top eight, um, and a huge amount more than the teams in the top four. But they also didn't draw many games, so they were converting wins, getting more wins than Arsenal, and a lot more than Spurs, but Spurs only with the eight defeats across the season, certainly helping them out. But interesting that they managed to finish one place higher than the year before. And the following seasons, they were back in the Europa League straight at the group stage this time, but starting the season off with two straight defeats. Um, and then they got a nice little winning run together in the Carabao Cup and the Europa League, uh, beating Ajax 2-0 as well, um, who scored in that game, Gareth Bale, and then an own goal. 
A uh, few defeats in the league and in the Carabao Cup. They drew with Happel and then they beat Dynamo Bucharest and Ajax 2-1. So definitely finishing at the top of that group. Wins over Newcastle, win over Chelsea, 3-0. Good performance there. Uh, did lose to Arsenal 3-1, but two goals in the last 10 minutes. Lalana finishing that one off, so showing that he's still in the team as well. Um, and then a nice at them beaten run here with a draw against Manchester United. But they did manage to beat Brighton, got revenge over Sunderland for last season as well, and then were beaten 2-1 by Manchester City. But a much better Premier League start this year compared to last season where they lost so many games. And they did manage to beat Hertha Berlin 6-3 in the first knockout round, then drew with Spurs. They had to play Spurs again and were beaten 5-3 this time. One goal better than last time. But so unfortunately, they have to play Spurs twice in the Europa League. They nearly beat them at the new White Hart Lane as well. A last-minute goal from Ross Barkley, of all people, and then beating 3-1 at home. That's really where they let themselves down. And no other cup competitions haven't got knocked out by Liverpool. So in the Premier League for that season, where did they manage to finish up? And if we have a look, you can see they did finish in seventh place. So dropping down a little bit again, and now much further behind the other teams. The likes of Spurs and Arsenal that they were managing to compete with last time have moved well clear. They're nearly 15 points clear of Spurs. And they only finished one point clear of Leicester, four points clear of West Ham. So falling much further back after a pretty good first couple of seasons. So if we look at their transfers over the last two seasons, then we can certainly see um, that's for the whole Premier League, not quite what we want to have a look at there. If we look at Southampton and their transfers over the last two seasons, you can see this season not spent much for into the fourth season there, but a lot of players going out and nobody coming in uh, in the season just gone. Hope going for nearly 30 million, Cedric's gone, Austin's gone to West Ham, uh, but none of the big name players, they're still hanging on to them by the looks of it. If we dropped the year before those £72 million raised that season, but still not signing a single player, uh, Van Dijk going to Napoli for nearly £57 million, Ward Prowse, Hoiberg, Reed, and Jordi Classy all going as well. Uh, Jose Fong going to Besiktas for just £1 million, obviously he's got quite a bit older, uh, and lots of players going out on loan, but they're raising a lot of money without bringing anybody in. They haven't made a single transfer since the start of this series because of all the free transfers they've brought in, and I don't know if that's because of the really tight wage controls. They're first signing Alan Ramsden from Crew for 325 k but maybe a sign that they are actually going to be coming through. Because if we look at their landmarks, I don't think at no point have they failed financial fair play. So it must just be really tight board controls because they brought in so much cash, but the wages are so high that I think they're just struggling to make the books balanced. Um, so it will be interesting to see how they do, but they're still hanging on to pretty much all of their major players. And you can see here that they're all pretty much still there. Even Gareth Bale now only valued at 12 million because he's having a terrible time. And I just don't think he's rated that highly in the game anymore. You can see 7.0 something ratings. It's not the kind of thing you would expect. Certainly not getting as many goals. He got 11 last season, 9 before that and 8 before that with very few assists to go along with it. So last season, actually the best season he's had with 19 goal contributions in 48 games. But that is reflected in his value going down as much as it has. Well, Sadio Mane's run away with it at 28 years old. Gabi Adini doing brilliantly for the team as well. Klein, Wanyama, Schneidlin, the big name players. Um, but some of them really, really falling apart. And interesting that they sold Van Dijk for as much as they did. You can see Lallana now worth just 400k. I don't know if that's because he's not played or not playing well, but either way, I mean, he's doing about as well as Gareth Bale is, if not better. Last season, he certainly seemed to do a little bit better. Um, so I'm not sure why the valuation of these players is dropping down as much, but they are all now hitting 30. So we'll just go forward two more years to see how the club has done um, kind of through the natural cycle and if they've managed to sign anyone else. Well, two more years into the future, and you can see they are again in the qualifiers for the Europa League. Managing to get past Strum, Graz and Aberdeen into the group stage. Decent start to the season. Only the one defeat and that was in the Carabao Cup. But otherwise, unbeaten in the Premier League and in the Europa League. Getting some good wins along the way. 1-1 uh, with Chelsea. Draw. Beat Manchester United 1-0 with Wanyama getting the goal. And 1-1 with Liverpool as well. 
And then they lost to City and Bournemouth as a poor de- results began. But they managed to come back with another excellent winning streak. I think they've done so well in the Europa League group stage as well. But then back-to-back defeats to Everton Palace lost so many games in a row here as well. Uh, five straight Premier League defeats will not have set them up well. But they did bounce back with more wins, including 4-1 over Arsenal. they got Nathan Redmond getting the goal, Gabby Adini, Klein and Josh Sims, whoever that is. All on the score sheet. They beat Chelsea 2-1 as well. Um, but not bad there. Belotti scoring for Chelsea, but two goals from Harrit for Southampton. They managed to beat Atletico Bilbao 1-0 away from home, 3-2 at home as well. And got through against West Ham um, on penalties in the FA Cup into the quarterfinals there. Managed to beat Sporting 1-0 away from home. And in the return leg, they managed to win 3-0. So into the quarterfinals of the Europa League, a pretty good year overall really because they've lost a few games but generally they're hanging up pretty well and they beat Crystal Palace to get into the semi-finals. Bass Dost for you FIFA players out there managing to get the goal and then in the quarterfinals beating 3-1 and then 3-0 by Monaco coming up against a brick wall there, lost to Spurs, lost to Arsenal in the FA Cup as well so the rails coming well and truly off their season Um, at this point I look at all those defeats they managed to turn it around right at the end but just too many difficult opponents in a row must have destroyed morale as well and you can see they've just absolutely plummeted and if we have a look at the Premier League table for that season you can have a look and see that they have not done as well as in previous years well still seventh place as good as before and actually just one point off the Champions League everybody seemed to be struggling that season for points uh, tile won by just 82 and you can see there 65 points they finished just one point outside of the Champions League but four teams all within one point of qualifying that's really really difficult especially for Spurs who had the same goal difference as Liverpool but managed to get knocked out I think because they didn't score as many goals um, but the same level of points as Man City so so unfortunate not to get through that season and then the following year and the most recent year You can see they were not in Europe, so despite missing out on the Champions League by one point, they did not get into the Europa League, and it's hit their Premier League form in quite a big way here. Lots and lots of defeats, a huge number of defeats really. They managed to get a nice win going, second half of the season not as bad, before getting knocked out in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. You can see the league season not actually finished yet, but if we look at the league table for Southampton, um, with one game left to play for them, they're not going to do well. They're down in 10th. A win would only move them up to 9th. Um, and they're not going to get any higher than that. So their league form well and, flu- well and truly starting to plummet with all of these players gone. They do have Vincent Company at the team now, which is interesting. He's going to be quite old at this point, though. And if we have a look at last season, you can see they didn't really let anybody go, despite all the players they'd sold before that. But they did bring in Bastos and Vincent Company on free transfers, along with these other players that we saw doing reasonably well by popping up with goals. 41 million spent the year after. Uh, Joao Carvalho is a good player from Benfica. Uh, Theo Hernandez from Real Madrid as well. Uh, Bernardi from Juventus. And then players going out, just Dan Hogg uh, to lead. So not too much difference across the transfers there, but they have stopped quite so many players leaving the club. But had they hung on to what is effectively... uh, nearly £200 million worth of players, would that have made that much difference given they still held on to all of their really, really big name players? They seem to do well at hanging on to their big names or certainly getting a very good price for the players that they do want to sell, but they didn't spend money for three years and I think ultimately that's what stopped them kicking on and getting to the next level, which you could say is true of Southampton letting so many good players go without quite replacing them or hanging on to their good players at any point in time. So overall, I'd say that this experiment was quite interesting because it seemed to show that Southampton, true to form, um, given the way they've been in real life, just not quite hanging on to their good players or at least not bringing in big name signings that they really needed to carry on a kick to the next level. Can't see Gareth Bale in the first team here. I'm interested where he ended up. He's now at West Brom, Gareth Bale, at just 32. 
years old. He moved there on a free transfer. Southampton didn't even hang on to him. He's left on a free transfer, which is just remarkable that he's managed to do that. Um, I think Lallana's gone as well. Didn't even notice that Bale had gone on a free transfer. Mane's still there at worth £54 million. Their only other big sign-in is this guy, Harrit, who they picked up from Schalke and seems like a very good young player, the Moroccan. Jao Carvalho, I know, is a very good player from my time in charge of Benfica last season. Um, but interesting just that they didn't kick in to the Champions League at any point, despite all of the really good players in. But let me know your thoughts on this experiment down below. And if you'd like me to do this with any other teams that you think have done or let some very good players go over the last 10 years, make sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed this experiment. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more like this. Uh, you can also support the channel on Twitter and Patreon using the links in the description. But until next time, see ya!